Okay. Okay. Uh, this is a joint work with Mike Braverman, Antonio Marina Lovett. So already, all, all the previous work talked about online matching. In the online matching, the goal is to find a large matching of a graph when parts of the graph, either edges or vertices, arrive online, and we have to make the matching decisions irrevocably. But in this talk, I'm going to talk about the online stochastic matching problem. And here, the difference is that we have additional stochastic information about future arrivals, and we can use them to potentially make better decisions. And this has a wide range of applications in matching markets when item services or people arrive online, and the stochastic information can be obtained based on the data that these markets have. <coughs> Where should I point this to work? <laughs> Nope. Always works. Okay. It worked. <laughs> okay. So, as you saw in uh, the previous talks, uh, most of the literature focuses on designing algorithms with a large competitive ratio for the online uh, for the online matching, and that is defined with respect to the offline benchmark. And this is a solution found by a prophet who knows the realization of all the edges beforehand and can uh, find the optimal match. But with respect to this offline benchmark, we know that uh, even for the simplest case, we can't <coughs> get better than uh, half approximation. And this is because it's a very strong benchmark and it's not a very fair competition because we don't, we, we don't have this extra information and there is no way of obtaining that. So particularly for, for the stochastic variant of the problem, an alternative benchmark that we can define is the online benchmark. And that's the solution found by an algorithm that has com <coughs> unlimited computational power but has the same amount of information as we do about the future arrivals. So this online solution can be found using an exponential dynamic program, but here our focus is on designing uh, computationally efficient algorithms. And this, was, uh, this benchmark was first considered by Papa Dimitrio Polner, Sabri, and White for this particular online stochastic matching problem. So the focus of this talk will be on the vertex arrival version. And let me define the problem. So we have our bipartite graph, and the parts, the vertices are in parts A and B, and we have W sub E for weight of H E. And vertices in part B are the offline vertices, and they're present from the beginning. Vertices in set A are the online vertices, and they arrive in a fixed order that's known to us. So at time t, vertex Vt is the one arriving. And we have P sub V for the probability of any vertex actually arriving. So at time t, either vertex Vt arrives, and we have to decide irrevocably whether we want to match it or not, or it's possible that this vertex doesn't arrive with probability 1 minus P sub that vertex. And in that case, we do nothing. So our goal is to find a matching M with a large approximation ratio, and we want to do that um, in a polynomial time. Our approximation ratio is defined as the expected weight of the matching that we find over the expected weight of the optimal online solution. So here we have this example. Okay. Here are the offline vertices. Here are the online vertices arriving in this order. And here are their probabilities. So at time one, the first vertex arrives. We decide to match it in this way. The second vertex doesn't arrive. At time three, this <coughs> vertex arrives. Its only neighbor is already matched. At time four, we match this vertex in this way. So the matching that I ended up with has size two, even though I made the best decision at any given time given my limited knowledge. But as you see, the offline solution could find a, a matching of size three. Okay. So uh, as I mentioned, the focus of this talk is on the vertex arrival version, but we also consider the edge arrival. In that uh, setting, edges are the ones arriving online, again, in a fixed order with known probabilities. So the previous, the previous bound for this particular problem was by Sabri and White's, 0.52. And uh, Papa Dimitri et al. also showed that the problem is PS space hard, meaning that we can't hope to get a PTAS. In this work, we improved this to 1 minus 1 over E. And also for the edge arrival, we give a 
uh, half approximation. So as you see, there's a large gap between the best possible approximation ratios achievable for against the offline benchmark and what we get here. Okay. So the algorithm that we designed for the vertex variable version is an LP based. So we borrow this LP from this work and then we couple it with the randomized rounding procedure to get our integral matching. So the LP has a variable X sub E, which is the probability of any vertex E joining the matching. And we want to maximize the expected weight of the matching. Other than these uh, standard matching constraints, we have this extra constraint, which is crucial for separating the best online and offline solution. So basically, this constraint says that for any edge E to join the matching, you have this, the, uh, the online vertex should arrive, and the offline vertex should be available at that time. So X sub E should be smaller than the probability of the, these two events happening at the same time. Now, because this is the optimal online solution, whatever decision it makes before time t is independent of the arrival of vertex vt. Okay? So now, but this is not true for the offline optimal because it has all the knowledge and can use the realization of vertex vt to make a better decision. So here, because of that, we can write this probability as the product of the probability of this probability of v arriving and the probability of u being available at time t in the optimal solution of the LP. And that is 1 minus the sum of all the xe's uh, connected to this vertex u before time t. Okay. Before talking about our randomly procedure, I'll talk about two other algorithms. The first one is a half approximation, which is designed against the online benchmark by Ezra Feldman, Graven, and Tang. In this algorithm, they um, at time t, if vertex v arrives, this vertex picks one of its neighbors, at most one of its neighbors, randomly, such that any neighbor is picked with probability with, with at least with this probability, and sends a proposal to it. So this probability is x of the edge over probability of the online vertex arriving. And we can do this because um, due to LP constraint, we know that this sum uh, at most to 1. So now, if an offline vertex receives at least receives a proposal, it accepts it with some probability. It's not the case that it always accepts the proposal. And that some probability depends on the solution of the LP. Okay. So this algorithm, the first property that it has is that any edge will be proposed with probability at least x of that edge. Okay. And that's because the, the vertex actually arises with probability p sub t, and the, their product will be x of the edge. And the second property is that it is possible to set that some probability in a way that each edge joins the matching with probability x of that edge over 2. So this means that it's a half approximation. Good. Okay. So the second algorithm is designed against the online benchmark by Papa Dimitri, <coughs> Polner, Sauber, and Weiss. And they improve this to 0 0.5. What they do is that they try to uh, increase the probability of each edge joining the matching to 0 0.51. And the first thing that they do is that they use those crucial LP constraints because, because without them, it's not possible to improve this. And the second thing that they do is that they allow each online vertex to send up to two proposals. Some of the online vertices are allowed to send that at most two proposals. And then they design the second chance algorithm to, incre to increase the probabilities to 0.51. And they then have to carefully adjust the probabilities of sending proposals and accepting the proposals to be able to get this. But it's not immediately clear that allowing two proposals will um, improve over half approximation, because what if conditioned on that the first proposal is rejected, the second one also is rejected. But they show that this is not possible. And to get that, they upper bound the positive correlation between the matching status of the offline vertices at any given time. So now I'll talk about our algorithm. So there are two main differences between uh, our work and the previous ones. First, um, in the previous works, as you saw, the online vertices are the ones sending the proposals. But in our case, the offline vertices send proposals. And the advantage here is that when an online vertex arrives, it can see all these proposals at the same time and can pick the best one. But when the offline vertex uh, receives a proposal, it has to reject it with some probability to leave room for future proposals. And the second one is that our offline vertices are allowed to send proposals as long as they are still unmatched. Okay. 
So this is how our algorithm works. So at time t, if vertex vt arrives, any available neighbor of this vertex u sends a proposal to it independently with this probability. And this probability is x of the edge over probability of uh, the online vertex arriving times the probability that the offline vertex is available at time t in the optimal solution of the LP. And as I mentioned, this is 1 minus x of all the edges connected to vertex u before time t. So, and why we can do this? This is because of the crucial LP constraint, which exactly states that the denominator here is uh, not larger than the denominator. Okay. Now, if the online vertex receives at least one proposal, it accepts the best one, which is uh, the edge with the largest weight, and gets matched to it. So here, let's see an example. We have, we are at time two. This vertex arrives. It has two unmatched neighbors. Say both send proposals to it. It accepts the best one, gets matched to it. Now, let's see the differences between our algorithm and the one that I discussed from the previous work. So first, in our case, the offline vertex sent proposal. And uh, in the uh, other algorithm, the in our algorithm offline send proposals, in the algorithm online send proposals. And because of that, we can accept the best one while they have to reject proposals on time. And the second difference is clearly that we are allowed to send proposals with a larger probability because we are using the uh, crucial LP constraint which separates the best online and offline solutions. Okay. So a property of our algorithm is very crucial is that any edge, E, will be proposed with probability at least X of E. So this means that if some online vertex has only one edge, the edge will join the matching with probability exactly X E. And to give some intuition why this is true, see that this ed the edge will be proposed if the online vertex arrives, the offline vertex is available at that time, and the proposal happens. And these two terms cancel out each other. And it's not very difficult to see that our algorithm does not overmatch a vertex, meaning that this probability, probability of u being available at time t, oops, <laughs> okay, is not larger than this number. Okay. Uh, so, I'll just talk a little bit about the analysis here. So, our analysis is per any online vertex. So, we bound the rounding loss per any online vertex. And uh, just for the sake of simplicity, I will assume that this vertex V has a PV equal to 1, meaning that it always arrives, because these terms, usually, they cancel out in our uh, analysis. So, if I was dealing with an unweighted graph, it was enough to show that this vertex receives a proposal with at least uh, probability 1 minus 1 over E times the probability that it receives a proposal in the optimal solution of the LP. But I'm working with a weighted graph. Instead, because I'm picking the uh, best proposal, this is enough to prove the approximation issue. And this lemma says that this, for any subset S of the, the, its neighbors, this vertex receives at least one proposal from this set with probability 1 minus 1 over E times uh, the probability that it receives a proposal from this set in the solution of the LP. Okay. So now to give some intuition about this, let's first say why this is very easy to prove if I knew that proposals are sent independently. So we know that at any given time, the available neighbors send their proposals independently, but their availability can potentially be correlated. So if they were to be independent, in the left-hand side, we have uh, one minus probability of uh, at least one of the neighbors and proposal, none of them send proposal. And this is just a standard inequality which directly gives us what we wanted. But uh, unfortunately, the proposals are not independent. It would also work if they were, to be, if they were negatively correlated, but that's not even the case. To be able to prove our claim without relying on correlation, we will directly bound the probability of set S sending at least one proposal by what, what we would ex expect if, if this was done based on the optimal solution of the LP. So what I mean by that is that if I wanted to show independence, I would show that probability of Probability of set S being, oh, okay, so I, sorry, I wanted to bound this term, which is probability of all the neighbors of this vertex being matched before time t. Okay, yeah. Uh, 
so and why, is this, why does this help me to show that the, the probability of sending at least one proposal is uh, good enough because, as I mentioned, the only correlation that I may have is between the matching status of the neighbors, okay? So now, if I wanted to show independence, I, wa I had to show that, okay, this is a smaller than a product of the probability of you being matched, all the neighbors being matched before time t, okay? Instead, what I show is that probability of all the s, all the vertices in s being matched before time t is upper bounded by the product of the probability of these vertices being matched in the optimal solution of the LP. And because, as I mentioned, my algorithm does not overmatch, this, this is smaller than this, and what I'm showing is slightly weaker, but it still works. Okay, so I'll finish the talk by uh, mentioning some future directions. First, it's very interesting to understand the computational complex complexity of these uh, online stochastic matching for both edge arrival, vertex arrival, and like weighted, unweighted, all these settings. And the second one is to study all these other Bayesian selection problems with respect to the online benchmark and see if we can get better approxima approximation when we are considering this alternative benchmark. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for <laughs> being on time. Okay. Uh, any questions? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, very nice talk. So the question I want to ask is that suppose we prescribe the algorithm to be for the time algorithm. Is it possible that we can get the best of both world results saying that the algorithm obtains optimal comparison against optimal online? Is also the one between optimal comparison with respect to optimal offline? I see. Okay, so we're asking whether it is possible to design an algorithm that uh, gets the best possible approximation ratio against the optimal offline, but also show some approximation for. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. But uh, with respect to the vertex arrival. I, the uh, half approximation algorithm that I mentioned is tight, so. But this algorithm is not half approximation. No. Um, right, that's the question. Yeah, I mean. If, if you don't have those crucial LP constraints, this will be optimal, but I don't know. Yeah. Something to think about. <laughs> is there time? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so. So, okay. so, so in principle, if you have the exponential many constraints in the linear program, you can basically have the overall time. Yeah. So have you talked about expanding the set of constraints you have to improve the Yes, we talked about like adding for any constant subset of offline versus, but so far we don't know if that helps. But I know that there is another paper, it's not published yet, that they improve one minus one over e. So if you want to know if it's so possible, it is. Configuration for the I don't know what they do, but uh, trying to write the constraints for any uh, subset of offline vertices, yeah, that would be. It. But uh, yeah, for any constant, we don't know. Which I think is this.